When you look at a painting like Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, Mona Lisa, what do you see? What goes through your head? That's what computer scientists Ahmed El Gamel and Babek Saleh are trying to figure out. Because they want to teach a computer how to see and think like a human being. More specifically, an art historian. At the Art and Artificial Intelligence Lab at Rutgers University, they have created an algorithm capable of seeing centuries of art in one second. And sometimes, what it sees comes as a surprise. Like when it encountered the Mona Lisa, one of the most famous and beloved images in the world. According to El Gamel and Celez algorithm, it's not as special as we think it is. The Mona Lisa ranked lower on their creativity scale than many of Leonardo's lesser known paintings. Another surprise, finding curious links and parallels between very different works of art like this 1950 painting by Norman Rockwell, and this 1870 painting by French Impressionist Frédéric Bazille. The similarities may be random, but they are real, from the heating stoves on the right-hand side of each painting to the overall design of both compositions. Another new connection? This vineyard scene by Van Gogh, painted in 1890, and this farm scene by Miro, painted in 1922. The experiment also made some connections that validated common art historical knowledge. It picked up on similarities between work by Claude Monet and American Impressionist Child Hossam. Through traditional human research, art historians have been aware of Monet's influence on Hossam for decades. The algorithm figured it out by just taking one look. The algorithms can actually flag uh, very uh, uh, a transitional point in art very correctly without any knowledge about uh, the art at all. They didn't know anything about Picasso or Munch or uh, Cezanne, but still recognized influential uh, pieces of work in, in their career. So all these abilities uh, in, involve perceptual, cognitive, and intellectual abilities when we look at art. And we would like to really transfer these abilities to the machine to really push the envelope of what we can do in computer vision and artificial intelligence. In visual art, every single item has its own definition of beauty. And that's very clear to me that we need to understand this, analyze this, and try to factorize it, actually. That's a very like, interesting to me and fascinating project to do. After some headlines in the news, like Computer Beats Art Historians, the project drew some criticism, like IBM's Watson competing with humans on Jeopardy, or Deep Blue challenging world-class chess masters, the art history algorithm wasn't good news to everyone. But art historian Marian Mazzone was fascinated. What they're doing has the potential to answer some of the deeper questions about how style changes, what are the characteristics of a style, what is the pattern of style change over a large period of time. You need computational tools to do that because there's no one human being that can amass that amount of visual material and analyze it. Um, you know, certainly I can tell you the style of any work of art you show me, but I can't see thousands and thousands of paintings over hundreds of years. There are things that the machine can do that a human being cannot. In terms of what it can quantify and count, no human being can do that. And why would we not want to use this as an additional means to understand our topic better? When it comes to computer science, art is one of the keys to evolving artificial intelligence. The work being done here will likely play a part in that evolution. It might have implications for search engines like Google or help make the next breakthrough discovery in art history possible. And one day, it may lead to computers that make art. Making art and looking at art are two things that only human beings do. If science is ever going to succeed in the quest for artificial intelligence, we will have to teach machines how to do both. The New Jersey State Council on the Arts, encouraging excellence and public engagement in the arts since 1966, is proud to co-produce State of the Arts with Stockton University, New Jersey's distinctive public university. Additional support is provided by the Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation.